Hi guys, Barnyard here, and today we're going to be looking at how you can build Bitcoin in Ubuntu and then run a full node on your Ubuntu machine. Now this will also work for a whole bunch of different versions of Linux, but I personally prefer Ubuntu 16, so that is the operating system that I'm going to be using to show you how to do this. So let's just jump right into it. The first thing you want to do is you want to go to the Bitcoin GitHub. And I'm not going to do any cutting or editing in this video. I'm just going to go from start to finish. So some of the things um, in this video, you might want to skip ahead while I'm like loading things or things are downloading, that sort of thing. But here we go. So github.com slash Bitcoin. And then I think it's slash Bitcoin again. And then here we will have all of these steps that we need to install and then run Bitcoin. So there's one way that you can do it that I'm not going to show you. And basically you just go into releases and then you download uh, the Bitcoin um, binary. And then essentially you can just use the typical Linux command dot slash, you know, Bitcoin QT or dot slash Bitcoin CLI. And then you can run it that way. But in this video, we're going to actually build it from source and I'll show you how to do that. So basically we just want to find the uh, building from source in Linux. So I'm just going to search for that. Actually what I'll do is I'll just Google build Bitcoin Linux. It'll be a bit quicker. And here we are. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to get all of the dependencies that we need, which are like the libraries that the C++ code needs to run so that we can build Bitcoin. And basically there are a whole bunch of different libraries that Bitcoin uses, a whole bunch of different C++ libraries because Bitcoin Core is written in C++. And we're going to need those um, before our shell and our kernel and all that stuff, before it's going to understand how to compile Bitcoin. So first thing we're going to do now that we've got all of the steps we need, we're going to press Control-Alt-T and that's just going to open us a little command line. And essentially we're just going to copy and paste all of these build requirements. So because I'm using Ubuntu, I'm going to install all of these. So we have things like build essential, which is something you need for, you know, pretty much every um, compiling anything really, particularly in C++, uh, libtool, uh, there's auto make, which is another C++ thing. I think C uses that as well. That's for make files because Bitcoin has make files. So that's done. Let's move on to the next one. This is a whole bunch of uh, libboost stuff, another whole bunch of C++ libraries. So we're just going to copy paste that in as well. Now on my machine, I need to do control shift V. Um, to paste because I don't know why control V I think is like an exit command in the shell so control shift V is what you use to paste so that one's just finishing off let's scroll down and then here we have a whole bunch of other commands we need to run these are just installing all of the dependencies and also the, the repository as well so I'm just going to do these as well and also what you can do is you can add dash Y on the end and then you don't have to click yes every time you put one of these in but I mean, it doesn't really make that much difference, so I don't bother. So now let's add this one, which is the repository. And it's going to ask if you are sure, press enter. And yep, we want to do that. And then we're going to run an update just to make sure that all these packages are up to date. Okay. Now it's important, in my opinion, to use Ubuntu 16 for this. If you read this here, for this reason, because um, you can get incompatible Berkeley DB errors if you're running Ubuntu 18, um, and that happens with. A lot of coins with Litecoin have had a lot of troubles using Ubuntu 18 with Ethereum as well. So in my opinion, with all this cryptocurrency stuff, using Ubuntu 16 is much more compatible um, and Ubuntu 14 as well if you're interested. But 16, in my opinion, because it's the most up to date apart from 18 and also um, for its level of new newness, the most compatible thing to use. OK, so let's keep scrolling down. It's really quite easy to install Bitcoin, really. You just have to do a whole bunch of copy pasting. So this is another library that we're going to get called the libmini upnpc dev. All right, so we've got that one. And then we want to get the ZMQ dependencies as well. 
And then the next step is um, basically, do you want to run a GUI wallet or do you want to run a command line wallet? And personally, even if I'm running command line wallet, I just get all of these as well, just because I might in the future want to use a GUI wallet and it's really not that big. How big is it? Let's have a look. It is 150 megabytes. I mean, in this day and age, that's pretty much nothing. So unless you're running like a Raspberry Pi or something with really limited space, you might as well just go all out on these dependencies because you never know if you're going to ever have to use them again in the future anyway. You might as well just install that extra 150 megabytes of, of libraries. Okay, so the last one is just here. So I'm just going to let this one finish and then we'll move on to the last one. And we'll say yes to that one as well. And then these instructions here are just for um, Fedora and, and OpenBSD and that sort of thing. We're not going to use those because we're using Ubuntu. So those are all the things that we need in terms of dependencies. So now that we have them, I'm just going to type ls so I can see where I am in my file structure. And then next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually clone the Bitcoin repository so that we can then start building. So we haven't actually downloaded Bitcoin yet. We've just got all the dependencies and things like that that we need um, to make the source code into a binary. So the next thing we want to do now is actually download the source code. And the way you do that is you install git if you haven't got that already. And the way you install git is you do sudo apt-get install git. But this version of Ubuntu 16 already comes with that. So if you're not sure, you might as well type that command. And if it doesn't work, if it says you already have it, then that's cool. And if you don't already have it, it'll install it, so that's fine. But I already have it, so I'm not gonna run that command. What we're gonna run is git clone, and then we're just going to get the Bitcoin URL on GitHub, which is where we are now, and then just press enter to that command. I'm gonna leave all these in the description as well, just so you don't have to do any guessing. And this is quite a big file. I think it's a few hundred megabytes. So it's just gonna take a couple of seconds to download. So I really like building from source rather than using binaries, um, just because I like to make sure that I definitely have code that is legitimate. There've been a lot of problems with cryptocurrency in the past where people have made releases um, for cryptocurrencies that have had viruses in them or that have had different consensus rules, which meant maybe that they would get your coins or you know just things like that. So it's really safer, in my opinion, to build from source rather than um, getting a release off the internet. You'd probably be safe getting the release off GitHub itself. That's probably fine. But yeah, if you find the release somewhere else on the internet, you've got to always be careful. Um, it's always just safer just to build from source. So this is almost finished. There's only a few more commands that we need to do now, really, to get the Bitcoin node running. So actually making Bitcoin, it does take a little bit of time. But um, once that's all done, then the last thing you have to do is sync it and you're good to go. So it's just finished downloading from GitHub. And as you can see, we have a Bitcoin in our repository now, which is a folder. So what we want to do is type CD for change directory and then type Bitcoin. And now when you type LS again, you'll be able to see all of the things that are in Bitcoin, in the folder Bitcoin. So the first thing that we want to do to start building is we want to type sudo, which means give me root permissions, sh, because it's a shell script, autogen.sh. And then basically what we do there is just wait for that to work its magic. I'm not going to go into what all of these commands do just because it would make this video really, really long. So for now, we're just going to automatically do all of these commands and hope that everything works. If for some reason one of these commands doesn't work on your machine, please leave a comment in the description and I'll try my best to answer all of those. Okay, so that's all done. The next one we want to do is sudo again. I'm not sure you actually have to use sudo, but we're just going to do it um, for good measure. sudo dot slash configure, and we're just running the configure script there. Basically, this is just checking that you have all your dependencies and all that sort of thing, and linking all that stuff up. This is going to take probably about 30 seconds. 
And this is where you see if you have any of the wrong dependencies, basically, if any of your dependencies are out of date, any of your dependencies are incompatible, that sort of thing. And it's a step that you have to take before you make, um, before you use the make command to actually compile Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. These, um, these commands that we're doing, apart from the one where we downloaded Bitcoin, will work for actually a lot of cryptocurrencies, things like Litecoin, uh, Bitcoin Cash, all those sorts of things. So it's all very similar steps. Okay, so we can see here that it seemed to have worked. So the next thing we want to do now is type cd source like that. So we go into the source folder and then we type sudo make install. And now what we're doing here is we're doing basically um, we have some make files and we're just compiling and linking all of the files with each other so that everything can be compiled into a binary and basically that's it. So I'm going to skip and so I'm going to leave the video here just because this takes absolutely freaking ages, probably an hour and a half, something like that. So I'm just going to show you what command you want to do in a separate window. Once this is finished, then you know how to run your Bitcoin node. So now that we're here, there's two things you want to think about. The first one is, do I want to open a GUI? of Bitcoin so that I can interact with the GUI and transfer coins and do whatever I want to do from there? Or do I want to have a command line wallet where I'm just typing Bitcoin commands and doing it in the console? So if you want to do the former, which is the GUI, basically all you type is Bitcoin QT and then press enter and Bitcoin will come up and you'll be able to interact with the wallet that way. The other way, is a little bit different. You type Bitcoin D and if you have your Bitcoin comp file set up correctly, that will all work. Now I'm going to show you what a Bitcoin comp file looks like as well. And basically once you run that command, you'll have Bitcoin D as in the daemon of Bitcoin running in the background. And then you'll be able to use CLI commands such as Bitcoin CLI uh, get blockchain info and then that will give you all the blockchain info or you could do Bitcoin CLI get balance and it'll tell you your, your balance that sort of thing. So basically what you're going to want to do is you want to gonna, you're going to want to go to Bitcoin like this. I'm not going to actually have this folder at the moment because I'm still compiling but let's say in the uh, interest of this video that I have that now because I've compiled it and run it for the first time then let's pretend I'm there. I would want to make a bitcoin.conf file like this and then I'd want to open it in my favorite um, my favorite editor. I'm just going to use Nano for the interest of time. And I want to do this. If I want to run a daemon, I will say daemon equals one. If I want people to be able to listen to my server, to my, to my node, I would say listen equals one. If I want to use RPC commands, I would give it an RPC port. And what I mean by that is people outside of your server, outside of your local machine, can send it commands like get balance and all that sort of thing. You'd set a port, let's just give it 22001. And then after that, you say RPC allow IP, and then you tell it what IPs are allowed to send it RPC commands. So we're going to give ourselves rights to do that. And then we want to give ourselves an RPC user. And let's just call our user for now. And then you'll give yourself an RPC password, and we'll just put it as 123123. And then what you would do is you'd save that by clicking in nano anyway, by clicking control O enter and then close that down. And then from here, we'll be able to go Bitcoin D dash, actually just like that, Bitcoin D. And then once we've done that, we'll be able to use the Bitcoin CLI, which is the command line tool so that we can say things like get new address, get balance, all that sort of thing. So that's pretty much everything for this tutorial. If it got a little bit confusing at the end, do tell me and I'll make an extra video when it's compiled and all the commands are running just so you can sort of see how that all works. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video. I really appreciate it. And thank you very much for watching.